All right, you should be able to hear me now. Okay, we're we're back. We're back. <laughs> All right. Make sure you smash that like button. Sorry about that. You know what happened? I uh, unhooked my mic, and it took the uh, it took the settings away for the mic. But we're here now. We're here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. You should be able to hear me now. All right. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so let's start with L.A. Reed because uh, we had a weird start to this. Okay, so L.A. Reed um, basically sold his whole catalog again, okay? Uh, let me do those shout-outs real quick, too. We got uh, Andre the Joker, Tasha Love, Jabbar, Garrett, Little Pants, uh, the Joker, Justice, Dastardly, uh, and Hot Sauce, Chuck... I got you, Sean's. Okay, we're but we're back. Okay, the, the the mic was messed up because I had, you know, gone portable with my laptop, and now I'm back. All right. So, anyways, we are back, and we got L. A. Reed selling his catalog along with a lot of other, a lot of other people. Okay, we have, uh, you know, Timberland. Uh, I think Neo recently did it too. Uh, Sean Garrett. It's getting real spooky. We had. Riza, these guys have a lot of money and they're buying people's catalogs up and this is what I'm thinking. So this is a this is a company out of London and they have investors. This is just a theory of mine. I haven't been able to there's so many investors. I haven't been able to vet this. But China has a lot of money right now and they need places to put it. There's nowhere to put money right now. A great way to get money is to buy everybody's catalog, right? You buy everybody's catalog up, and then that's just money coming in for the next, you know, forever, right? They could fund a bunch of stuff. I'm, th I'm thinking that they're buying up. The China's going to own hip-hop. <laughs> China's going to own hip-hop, man. They're going to own America. Uh, but anyways, uh, L.A. Reid sells 100% of his catalog. Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown, TLC, Tony Braxton. So Hypnosis Songs, they're the ones buying everything up, and it's Investment Advisor, the Family Limited. Now, they all have investors. They have tons, hundreds of millions of dollars to buy catalogs. He announced that Grammy-winning award producer, music executive L.A. Reid, has been appointed to its advisory board, and the company has also acquired 100% of his publishing interests. <laughs> Why not? 162 songs. Um, you know, he has Boys to Men, End of Road, Bobby Brown's Every Little Step, Don't Be Cruel, uh, Whitney Houston's I'm Your Baby Tonight, Queen of the Night. Uh, and then he got a bunch of TLC track. It's just crazy, man. He probably got about 20, 30 million, maybe more. Um, anyways, uh, it shows revenues of the year climbing, showed its revenue soaring, a full year of business climbing to 81 million in 12 month period. So they've already made tons of money. Think about it, man. So they own a lot of people's catalogs. If you go to their their website, they own a lot of people's catalogs. Why don't these people hang on to their catalogs? Why are they selling it? They, the, the company has spent $700 million acquiring 42 catalogs. This is spooky. They got Templin's catalog too. You, you, this is spooky, man. Why would all these companies want to buy up 100% of someone's catalog? What's going on here? You know? Now, a guy named Merck. I don't know. His, I'm not going to butcher his last name like that. He's the founder of a fund. It's a fund that people invest in. And I'm thinking that China's heavily involved, invested. That's just a that's just a guess of mine. Dark Child's in there, too. Jeez. Dark Child had a lot of hits back in the day. Oh, well. Bad move, I think. We'll see. Then we got Black Youngster. Remember that picture he had with his the uh, supposed lawyer getting him out of jail in Dallas? Well, that wasn't his lawyer, okay? It was some guy who was able to access him and, like, offer his services. And Black Youngster's like, this guy must have been police. He wasn't, you know, how are you going to get just, get, I've never had a lawyer just access me like that. Uh, he must have been police. I mean, you know, I already have a lawyer. I told him I don't need his services. I threw up. A sign. You can't take pictures in jail like that. You can't take pictures in jail like that. Like, come on, man. Like, it's not normal, especially with someone you don't know. 
So I'm gonna be honest. Like Black Ninja was like, "Yo, I don't even know this guy. Who is he? He's a punk." You know, he was going off. I don't blame him. Cause honestly, let's be honest, man. Who is he? Who is that guy? <laughs> Spooky, man. Uh, can you imagine that? Some guy just walking and like it was definitely a setup. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I believe Black Youngster was. <laughs> They were trying to set him up. They were like, yo, I'm sick of him getting off these charges. You know? They were gonna like, we're gonna we're gonna nail the coven right here. Augie McDonald, I see you. Jabbar. Um who else is in here? Davin, Aaron Finney. If I miss your name, sorry, you know, I'm trying. Leo King, what's good, man? Uh Vel Blue, Wheezy Wheeze, Leo King, Little Pants. Bracket was good. Alicia Cole says she made that live. What's good? All right. Swirl Girl's here. She's here midway, but you're here. Submit Kings. What's good? She says G90. G90 says, JT, I'm watching The Mass Singer. I'm trying to call out Justin Timberlake. I'm like, man, that's Jordan Tower, that alligator man. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> What does that mean, bro? Is that a diss? <laughs> anyway, G90, you wouldn't diss me, man. You, you, you're always in here. I can always take a joke. All right, let's get up to the next spot. Okay, so let's talk about King Kim Kardashian. Brio, I see in the room. Uh, Tony, what's good? All right, so Jordan Tower, you are a busy man. Respect. Well, you know, got to stay busy out here. Kim Kardashian. She made a lot of money, man. <laughs> so they, they did the Forbes list. I always wonder, like, how do they come up with these numbers? Like, do they submit these numbers so they can get on the Forbes list? Probably. Probably. But, you know, she, she, you know, even if they're submitting $790 million, it's a lot of money. But they definitely, even if they're inflating it, it's still crazy amount of money, bro. So it doesn't even matter. Even if they exaggerated a little bit to get on the Forbes list, it doesn't matter. Because they probably, even if they made half that, they're still just murking it out here. Cosmetics. Even the mom made it. Let me, where is this thing? Here it is. Okay, so Kim Kardashian. $780 million off of cosmetics and reality TV. Kylie Jenner. $700 million off of cosmetics. Rihanna. 600 million off of cosmetics i mean this is the perfect thing to be in because girls are always going to buy a lot of cosmetic stuff and they're going to have to keep buying it because it runs out i mean this is an amazing business i mean look at jeffree star and people like that they're rich man that's the kind of business you want to be in. you don't want to sell something once you want to sell something uh you know 50 times you know and that's the kind of business you want to be in. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay, so Chris Jenner, off of just managing all her daughters and everything, $190 million off cosmetics. That's crazy. So she must have a good 20%, maybe more. Because I, I think other, other Kardashian girls came up with cosmetics too. So... Maybe she's getting 25%. I mean, I don't know. I, I, you know. I'm not doing math right now. I don't feel like it. it sounds more like a 20% deal, but... <laughs> wow. Oh, here it is. $190 million. Well, Superstore uh, 600 million landed number 23. However, Oprah Winfrey topped them all with $2.9 billion net worth. Oh, this is their total net worth. Kim Kardashian is... Sheesh. She... she uh, she got above Kylie real quick. She said, oh, Kylie's making money off cosmetics? Psh. Yo, Ma, yo, hook me up with a cosmetics thing right now. I'm trying to get this bread, okay? All right, so then we got Young Blue. Drake is about to give him a super stimulus package tomorrow night. I'm sure the label paid for the stimulus, but he had to like the artist at first, so... Now, Trippy Red, he leaked the DMN uh, conversation, uh, Young Blue, right? And people warned him, like, yo, Trippy did this, and it messed up the whole release. Drake's not going to drop it now. Now, 
he said, nah, nah, nah. I got his permission. Trippy didn't. And then Trippy posted up some plaques he has, and he said, yo, I don't need uh, the hottest rapper in the game to get hot out here. I got hot on myself. Yo, bro, 10,000 projects, whatever they are, they're buying. They're, they're definitely inflating numbers a little bit, but a lot of people do listen to Trippy Red. I'm not going to lie, okay? They do. And he has some decent songs. I just don't like him. But his songs are good. I just don't like him. I don't even know him. I just don't like how he acts on Instagram. It's annoying. He, I think he's super annoying. And I think so, most of his songs are annoying, but he does have some really good ones, okay? He does. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like stunt here. Like I didn't listen to his album, check it out, see what the hype was about. And it's like, yo, some of them songs are so good, you know? Uh, you know, meh, that's a, that's what most of his songs are. Yeah, you a little girl the baby. You know, he just like, you know, extends notes, filling up tons of the song. Most of the song is to him just holding a note. Keyboard. You know, he just, <laughs> it's like, yo, he, he gets that assistance from the uh, auto tune or whatever, and he can just carry a note all night. What else is going on out here? Let's go to random news first. Let's shout some people out, and then we'll go some random news i appreciate everyone being in here g90 no no dis oh, no, i appreciate that man yeah i could take a joke anyways bro uh brio younger shout me out I, I did man you got it submit kings checking out your videos they dope thanks man oh on my instagram i put out that prodigy just what clip from it i didn't edit the video it's like four or five scenes we shot real quick for that uh 05 ben's truck then we also have uh, Superstar, Freestyle, Three Stories. I have another one with him and um, Twin. I gotta put that. Up. I gotta put a snippet of that up. I got some songs with P. Uh, oh, Sugar Pop. Then he has another one with Sean Kingston. There's a lot of stuff I didn't put out. Interesting. I'm gonna put it out anyways, cause like nobody. Like, nobody really approached me for the footage from Prodigy's documentary. So, you know, to, buy, to purchase it for another documentary or anything. So, I'm going to just... Um, and, of course, I would have to correlate that with his family. But, uh, anyways, I'm just going to put the stuff out, man. doesn't matter. I own it, you know. But uh, if I had sold it, I would have correlated that with the family because it's only right, you know. Because he's not here anymore. But... I was lucky to work with Prodigy. Salute, JT. John Cooley Jr. I see you, man. Push Shiesty and TK need to collaborate. Huh? <laughs> Bamboos. What's up? Lucky man. Elsa Nurse. You're not supposed to take those pictures in jail, but people do it all the time. I know, but, like, that was in an area where cops would be, you know, like the visiting room with the glass. You know, usually it doesn't go down there, but it is what it is. Moon model, Ryan Garrett. JT say he and I. <laughs> Drew Towers, see how Chloe, Kim Kardashian. Okay. Okay. This mod. Chris Jenner is a business and marketing genius. Yes, she is. Okay, let's get to random news right now. People say 50 Cent is struggling to keep his girl competing with O'Malley. Come on, man. Nobody's competing with a melee, okay? Stop it. Stop the cap. Oh, a lot of people are mad at Ice Cube because the Trump administration thanked him for helping with the platinum deal, okay? Now, this is how I look at it. I think Ice Cube took advantage of a moment, which is a good thing. So, like, there's a moment right now in this country where you can get people to move on your time right so he put forth a he reached out to the biden campaign and the trump campaign and uh they put together a package trump acted a little faster and he put together a platinum package so j uh, so ice cube took advantage of a moment and turned it into an opportunity for people for minorities okay which i think is great 
you can't hate on that. But people people were emotional, right? And they just can't see the good in anything. You got to see the good in some things. You got to kind of be bipartisan because to get things changed, you kind of got to work with everybody, you know? Um, doesn't mean he's on one side. He's it means he's in the middle more, more, more than likely. Uh, so it says this, this platinum plan is like... Uh, achieving more employment for minorities you know black americans and increasing capital for new businesses black owned businesses uh security by sending this law the president trump brought a common sense of criminal justice reform to the american people for the first time in decades which which is a great thing prosperity as the first president to provide long-term funding to Historically black colleges and universities, this administration continues to seek an immediate generational advancement for black Americans. Fairness, as demonstrated through actions to initiate investment opportunity zones, as well as address health, uh, health disparities, wage gaps, and necessary education reforms. That's a big thing. Education reform. The, education sh should be equal um up until college at least you know like where you learn the same amount in every school i mean i went away to school at one point because i got a scholarship for something you know not, not nothing crazy it was like a small thing but i i was able to go to a better school and there i learned more i learned what i learned in my first year of college you know my first year of college was me repeating high school and I was like, oh, okay, so there is a big difference when you go away to school. Like, you learn more. It's a real thing, you know? Um, three million new jobs. This is the platinum plan over four years. Three million new jobs for the black community. Creating 500,000 new black-owned businesses. That would be great. Increase access to capital in black communities of almost 500 billion to start those businesses safe urban neighborhoods with the highest policing standards we'll see as it's been uh we'll see about that commit to working on a second step act access to better education and job training opportunities give black churches the ability to compete for federal resources mm, that's good bring better tailored health care to address historic disparities like diabetes and stuff yeah that's good hopefully all this happens we'll see immigration policy that protects american jobs advance home ownership opportunities and enhance financial literacy in the black community onshoring manufacturing advanced jobs well this guy usually does a lot of what he talks about unlike most politicians he just has a filthy mouth he needs to stop talking so much I'm talking about trump he needs to yeah he talks a little too much my g but hey i'm in the middle i'm sure a lot of you guys in the middle. it's like we'll see what happens with this you know but uh shout out to ice cube for uh, seizing an opportunity and turning it into uh turning it into an advancement for a lot of people you know he took advantage of some but you know a lot of politicians lie but this guy did do a lot. You know, he did put, he did reform prison and stuff like that. And he did create a lot of jobs. We'll see if he does all other stuff. He did, and he did fund a lot of uh, permanent funding of a lot of black colleges, which is pretty good. We'll see what else he does. Can he stick to the rest? We'll see. Ice Cube's going to hold him to it, though. <laughs> we'll see. We know that. Ice Cube's going to apply that pressure. He's like, yo, man, I helped you build this. You got to make it happen, man. We'll see. But I think Biden's already won. So I think they, they already have the fix in for Biden. So I think we're going to have to see what Biden's plan is because uh, I don't know. I think Biden, the, ra the most racist <laughs> person I've seen in my life, is going to win. I mean, he spoke at a... a uh, members, you know, the, the supremacist member uh, funeral before, you know, he's he's spooky, man. I think politics in general is spooky. I hate politics. I hate politics, man. Bunch of liars, man. 
bunch of liars telling you what you want to hear at a certain moment. They're all doing this everything for a moment. Even though that platinum plan that was presented, they might not mean it. They're going to do it because they have no choice. That's the that's the move out here. For true, for true really. Uh, moon model. The fix is, oh, the fix is in, bro. <laughs> I think Biden's going to win. I mean, it's just, it seems like the fix is in. We'll see. I mean, it seems like they fixed it up with the post office and everything. There's a lot of weird, spooky things happening. But we'll see. I just want to see everybody prosper, and I want to see just, you know, better for every more equal playing field. I mean, I think we all want that, right? I mean, I want people to feel good. I just want people to feel good, man. Oh, man, what's good, man? Yelsey Guido, I appreciate you. Biden, number of shit. Yeah, he did help mess up the black family. Elsa says uh, Biden messed up the black family. Yeah, with the, the uh, with the way they did welfare, and you, you had to take the, there's couldn't be a black man in the house or something like that. That was crazy, man. If you read that bill, it's crazy. It's like well, th there was no chance for black families to feel to stay unified, you know. So they, I don't know. We're going through a weird time of politics where it's like really weird. You know, nothing makes sense. Both both sides, you're like, did they just say that? Did they just do that? <laughs> Is this happening? <laughs> That's how I feel with everything now. Is this happening right now? Did he just say that? It's crazy. It's crazy, man. You can only laugh at it because we have no control over it. Don't think that uh, we can change much. <laughs> I'm I'm just being honest. You might you might hate me for that, but I just don't I don't I don't know, man. Things are so spooky. When you read the news every day, it's just what's going on. Oh, coming to America sequel sold to Amazon Studios for 125 million. Congrats to Eddie Murphy. He's doing his thing, man. He just did a deal with somebody Netflix too. I'm surprised he sold it when he just did a 50 million dollar deal with Netflix. That's interesting. Gotta look into that. Um, hmm. Little Zan. He's going to court for pulling a weapon out of a man who pressed him about Tupac comments. <laughs> That's hilarious. Little Zan uh, went, went on social media today and was talking about how sad he is. Ah. Jeez, go see a therapist, my G. <laughs> we don't want to. Nobody's gonna help you here. You're gonna get. You're making it worse for yourself. Uh, do do Nav and Wheezy reveal title to upcoming collab tape. Okay, Crooked names one of the problems with new albums. I'm not that interested. I don't think that many people are. But we'll see. One day album opening the door to a wider conversation. Using his oh gosh, do I have to read all this? Imagine the time and effort to put into creating some of those albums that only get played for seven days. Yeah, music is more dispensable now. There's too much. There's too many rappers. There's too many people making the same kinds of music. It's just that's what happens when things could become very accessible. I remember when I was doing music videos and it got too accessible. Everybody was doing it, and they were lowering the price, and they were lowering the value. It used to be fun. Then it became not fun. <laughs> but that's how everything is. T.I. and Little Baby dropping a collab single tomorrow. Well, finally, this might push T.I. to make some of the best music he's made in a while. Future and Drake's Life is Good goes seven times platinum. That Drake stimulus... Drake, oh, DJ Khaled is the podcaster now, and he has a star-studded lineup. It looks just like Lil Wayne's podcast. I swear. You can't make this stuff up, man. And Lil Wayne's on it, but it's like Lil Wayne doesn't care if people copy him. He's used to that. But uh, DJ Khaled is just, I mean, I guess get out here and get your bag, you know, stay home. He has to stay home. He needs to... Think about the money this guy spends, man. Look at his mansion and everything. 
He's spending that money as fast as he gets it. Okay, he bought like a $10 million house. It's crazy, but it's his money. He can do whatever he wants to. He's buying, he's buying Royces, Rolls Royces left and right. He's buying boats. Boat is not cheap, my G. It's like almost a million bucks, okay, for a little mini yacht, okay? A boat is not cheap. Unless you're buying a Boston Whaler or something, it's still not cheap, but for him it would be cheap. What else is going on out here, guys? Uh, let's see. Ti, how are those still? Ti, Ti is cool. Ti well, hasn't had the best couple years, but man, one of my favorite artists between 2002 and 2010, for sure. I got to start working out harder, man. I feel like I had a breath a little bit. Rico away, 500 BLK, B9 boy. I'm voting for JT. <laughs> I would never want to be president, and I could never be president. I couldn't handle that pressure. Whoosh. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how any president does it. That's a lot of pressure. I love it when people say they're moving when a certain candidate wins. You just got to ride out the bad storm, my G. I mean, you never know. We've had a lot of bad. Remember when Bush was president for eight years? He was horrible. Horrible. He was disastrous. Obama was kind of like just, you know, he was there. He was cool. He was the cool president. He didn't do a ton, but he was the cool president. Obama's a cool guy. Um, And then, you know, Trump, Trump made a couple things happen, but he's he's he is. <laughs> the way he talks is crazy, my G. Trap music, best album. I don't know about that. I like that one with uh, King. Brian Lewis. What up, man? Trump like drama. Yeah, he does. It's like 50 Cent as president would be Trump. Right? <laughs> like, can you imagine 50 Cent as president? It would be Trump. It would, he would be trolling everybody, calling out Ja Rule. It would be crazy. No, no, Obama just was like the cool president. He didn't have, he didn't do anything bad. He didn't do anything amazing. He just was cool, you know. He was cool. What did I think of Wayne's Deluxe album? It was good. Obama was, I don't, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't call him that, but. I would just say he was like, you know, he just living that life. He made history, though. He was the first black president. I mean, I voted. You know, I was. he was the best candidate that year, for sure. For sure. For sure. Even the second time, he was the best candidate. So, he was the best choice. Obama was the best choice, for sure. You always got to go with, like, the best choice or just sit it out. It's up to you. 50 would do a better job than Trump. I don't know about that. 50 Cent. 50, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If, see, 50 Cent does business, but he doesn't understand, like, I don't even understand it 100%. I understand it okay. There's certain things that you got to understand as far as how the economy works. 50 Cent is just a go-getter. He, 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 he makes things happen. 50 Cent has more energy than 10 of us combined, Okay. 50 Cent's working on 20 shows at once, two albums. Uh, he's working on side liquor deals. Like, you know, 50 Cent is a beast, okay? He gets to the bags, okay? That doesn't mean he could run the whole country, but he gets to that money. He, get, he makes things happen. Who would Obama run against Romney? Yeah, nobody cared about Mitt Romney, bro. Mitt Romney was trash. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that would be a slogan. Yeah, that would be at the Joker. That would be a slogan right there. 50 Cent is just, you know, 50 Cent, man. You gotta love him. He to love it, gonna be on top. I can't even, I don't even remember the hook. He to love it, man, G's on top. Envy me. I'm Rams MVP. <sighs> All right, 
bro. I'm gonna go lay down for a second and get back to the work, man. I appreciate you guys so much. You guys are awesome. And uh, I hope you guys are having a great night. I'll be back. I feel like hot down here. I need to like hang out upstairs. All right, guys. Have a good night. You guys are awesome. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for coming to the live. I love hanging out with you guys. You guys are awesome. And uh, hey, let's do it again tomorrow. But you know, I'm gonna do a, a a premiere in like an hour or two. So make sure you're around for that. I appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit the bell. Make sure you subscribe if you're in here. This is the first time. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys coming in. You guys are awesome. You don't even understand, man. It feels good when you guys are here. Okay, and I love talking to you guys and see what you guys think. You guys are really cool, man. Um. I'll check you guys later. Make sure you smash that thumbs up on the, on the way out. We only have 76 likes. Let's get it over 100 on three. One, two, three. Smash that like button like Timmy there. And let's get it on the next one. I appreciate you guys. I keep saying that, but yeah, I just do. I do appreciate you, man. All right. Peace.